Um, God bless all of you for coming to church. Again, it's a joy and a great pleasure to see all of us in church. Amen. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see something very important today. Amen. I want you to give me your uttermost attention, rapt attention. Amen. What I'm about to do today, it's supposed to be one, two, three. I want to put it together and do it one because I want to run up the series. Uh, next year, another time, we will pick it up again. Okay? So I'll bring you excerpts from different parts of part one, two, and three. We're going to talk about order in church. Amen. Or church order. Uh, I will not be going uh, uh, systematically as the, the Bible reading came. But uh, I think there was a, there was a, I've not started preaching. Take your time. Uh, I just want to, like Pastor Yvonne said, and there's a reading that confuses Paul who is writing. And so he's a, he, the apostle of the grace of God. And so and, uh, maybe this one, we'll deal with it next year, but just so that no cobwebs are left in your mind, the person may come be found. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. How Paul said over there is not saying women should not speak in church at all. It's part of the order. Amen. Uh, this today, if there's a young lady here who has not yet said yes, or if there's a married woman here whose husband is slothful towards the things of God and towards the Bible, this word is for you in particular. I need a lot of time to explain, but I cannot explain because I want to deal with some other things. He said that. And if, verse 34, let the women keep silent in churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are supposed to be submissive, as the Lord says. The verse 35 puts things in perspective. He says that, and if they want to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home. For it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. What he's saying, you see, he was addressing an issue. You know, women, the women in church, in the church in Corinth, they were talking too much. They were asking, you see, let me just round this thing up. If you're a man and you want to marry, eh, there's a message for you over here. You have, to be, you have to know the Bible because your wife, the Bible is saying that it is shameful if your wife doesn't understand anything before pastor and before asking anybody, they must ask you. If they are not sure you know, if they ask you and you too, you don't know and you must know. Amen. So let them ask their husbands first. It's order. So the women were just Asking everybody, they were not doing the proper thing. So Paul was establishing order in the church and saying that the woman, you know, if pastor preach anything you don't understand, before you ask your ministry leader, your home fellowship leader, even before you come and ask pastor, it is the man's responsibility to understand. So you ask her, my Lord, the thing that pastor taught, can you explain? If you haven't done that, you don't come to the church and ask. He said, it is shameful. First of all, not to the woman and to the church, but to the man. So the man that is toasting you and the guy that said he will marry you, that man, can he explain Exodus chapter 18? Yeah, because the Bible says that if I don't understand anything, I must come and ask you. So that for the woman, understanding, basic understanding in the word of God, to be first, it should not be a car. An iPhone 80. And, and all those things. If they have them, it's good. But if the man has all these things, and he cannot, and a sermon comes forth, or something is happening in church, and they cannot ask you, and they are asking pastor. Surprise, say it's shameful. So, it is, he's not saying the woman shouldn't speak. They can speak. But if it is about a question, if they also, oh, why? Is a problem? See, if they want to learn, look at the Bible. If they want to learn something, he's established people so that the woman, he's just saying that if you haven't asked your husband, don't come and ask anybody.
because it is shameful. And he was forbidding that. Because just maybe some women, some married women were asking some things from some young men and they were using it to take advantage to, to chew. There's no reason or not that thing has to be done. So that, although Henry understands, you know that Henry, Henry is the one that put that thing. He understands. But if you are Mrs. Uh, your friend is saying, to go go. And you didn't understand he's a single man. Your husband must ask your husband. They were that detailed about even asking questions. You understand? It's not that the women should not talk. No. Hallelujah. If they want to learn something, they must ask their own husband at home, not even in church. At home. Amen. Just so that you don't say that. Ah, does it mean that the women who are talking are out of was addressing a specific situation in that church. Are we okay now? Are we okay now? Yes. So if you're a man and you marry, learn Bible. Learn Bible. Because the women in this church, they will ask you. Amen. If the man rather doesn't want you to go to church, or the man doesn't like church. Amen. Now let's pray. Father, honor and glory to you once again. Speak through me and speak to us. And may we all be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40 or 40. Is it 40 or 40? Or 40? Whatever. You understand? Let all things be done decently and in order. Beloved, if there's one word that summarizes the church, or the body of Christ. It is order. Say order. Say order. Let me say this. The reason why some people don't like church. The reason some people cannot associate with church. Is because of pride. It is because they are disorderly. It's because they are reckless and careless. And they cannot. They, they don't like order. If an orderly person. You will like church. Or church will make you or train you to be an elderly, an, an orderly person. God, when we saw him in Genesis chapter 1, there was chaos. There was disorder on the face of the earth. And God, whose character can be summed up as order, did something. Write Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 to 12. We can read all verse 20 to 21 and then verse 24. 2 to 12. 20 to 21 and verse 24. When you get home, go and read it. But let me read a few to you. You saw what happened. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was in the face of the deep. The spirit of the Lord hovers upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God is creating order. Right from there, God created order. And God called the light day and called the darkness night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. We see God creating order all the verses I've given you, you see that God set everything in motion and gave everything an assignment and a purpose and a mandate and since that day they have all been following that and nothing has changed so, this one is morning, this one is evening, water be here he told the sea that you can come up to here, you cannot cross and the sea head and it's like that, he said raining season I'm a dry season, Hamatan, autumn, summer, spring, winter. He set everything. And over there, he taught us his character and his purpose. So that those who call themselves children of God must know that he is a God of all. He creates order. He should let you know that where there is this order, God is unable to do anything. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The moon, the waters, man, woman, 
He saw, he created everything and gave everything. Should you know? Everything. No dog has said that, no male dog has said that they will sleep with a male dog. He said the thing and they are obeying it forever. He said the thing, Bibia Pepe Pepe. Nobody crossed their line. His character is like that. And when you look at your body, when he created man, Adam and Eve, he saw that, no, he had already created Eve in Adam, but he pulled Eve out and said, this one is not good. Let me add a woman to it. Because God, beloved, look at your body. He set everything in order. And when Bibi or Yana Biswa, the water will not come from ears. He said it. Saliva through your mouth. Everything has been said. No, any, in full. So, God said everything. And when you look at your body, every, every part of your body is performing its function. And it cannot change. Everything that he said is permanent. It's and for this our God. All his ways are perfect. When he said it, it is, it is done. Hallelujah. He decided to put our head here and not here. And that is how it's going to be. He put the hand here, the leg here, and the leg will not complain. Amen. And if you look at how he created man and the function of our body, he said he will give women breast, men no breast, men having complained. You cannot complain. He put a, he put hair here. He didn't put hair in the palm. And the palm have not said that uh, why is there hair in the head? And me, I don't have hair. It will never happen. And the foot has never complained that why did you put all this weight on me? Hallelujah. Men who have lalas, women no lalas, and no woman has asked God. You can't ask God. He determined it. He set it like that. And for the men, some have hair, some don't have. You can't question God. This one is fat. This one is short. He gave me to Mr. Chenebua Kodia. He gave you to Mr. Odum. You can't ask God. You are born in here. Another person, Van Dyke, was born in. Netherlands. It is God. He determines all these things and nobody can, can ask him anything. You cannot say that you want an eye at your back and say, a young kofu will be the adiba bo we chinti nya minfa eni bakun Your eyes are red and you have brown eyes. He determines these things and you can't complain. You can't change them. It is there like that. He said it. Somebody, somebody is like this. Somebody can ask you, why is this person like this? It's God. We cannot go and ask God. Hallelujah. And so, when you look at the body and the perfection and the order in our body and how each, each of them function, the, the nose has never said that I want to see. The, the eyes has never complained, why can't I smell? I want, to, I want to know how it feels to smell. Oh, the beer and woho. And say anything, they will bite the person. They will be inside. They will be cool. They the, 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 the will be there. The techema said, No, no, Olivia, I want to come to the stomach. There's no teeth there. Now, when you see the perfection and the order in your body, and God calls the church the body of Christ, there's a reason. Why he likens the church to the body. He created many things. But the body and its function and its order. The head and the body. He said Jesus is the head. And the church is the body. There's a reason why. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't understand these things. Church will not profit you. Church is a blessing. Church can do more for us. This, these gatherings are supernatural. They are everything. Everything we need is in these meetings. There's nothing you need that is outside of these meetings. If God is here with his family and his children 
and Christ is in all of us, and what you are looking for, you cannot find here, you can't find it anywhere. Think about it. It's the dearest place on earth. However, we have not been taught what it means, how to come to it, and how to behave in it. And we are taking our time to explain it. Hallelujah. Concerning the local church, our character should be all that. Concern the word of God first of all. The word of God is what determines everything and guides everything we do. Even concerning the Bible, when you first Peter chapter 1 verse 20, he gave us the word of God. He said the church, he gave us the word of God. He said that the this word is of no private interpretation. Knowing this first before anything, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. That the scripture, there's a way it has to be interpreted. I am God. I am the unchanging changer. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. To let you know that anything that I do is permanent. The gift and the callings of God are irrevocable and without repentance. So when God says the church, there's a way he wants it to function. If it doesn't function like that and we don't get the best out of the church, we are to blame. We cannot blame God. So it is in our interest to take our time and not rush and understand how he wants us to do this thing called church. And he said that, first of all, the way that we used to do the church it is of no private interpretation. You cannot say that God is giving me a different revelation. The word of God explains itself. The second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, tells us that all scripture is given for a purpose. So you cannot, you go to church, many churches and everybody, God has revealed to me, an angel appeared to me, all of these things, listen, this is just disorder. It is not God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable. He has showed us what to use the word of God for. So, in this, we see what we cannot use the word of God for. The word of God is used for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. So, God himself used the word of God for correction. So, if somebody says that God is correcting you with malaria or with hardship, you have to ask the person question. But God says that his word is what he used to correct us. For instruction in righteousness. So, even the word of God, you cannot do anything our final authority, you see, the word of God is authoritative. So people who don't like God and his word, there are people that are proud. Because the word of God is very, he won't allow you to add your own. You cannot use your experience to explain the word of God. The word of God can explain itself, hallelujah. It is the final authority in the church. So that if we are all confused about anything, what does the word of God say? We come there and every matter is resolved. You cannot go and bring any extra biblical activity. Put your vision and your dream aside. We judge everything by the word of God. That's why he gave us since he died. And if he tarries for another thousand years, Genesis to Mal Je Revelation, and he won't add another book. If you finish, go, start again. Start again, over and over. And so when you look at the church, we must function as the body. Look here. I have a lot to say. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. I say, How then, brethren, when you come together, each one has a psalm, each one has a teaching, each has a tongue, a revelation, has an interpretation. Let everything be done for edification. You see, when we come together, there's a reason we draw a program. In our meeting, there's always, we don't just gather. It is either a prayer meeting, it is a family service, and there's this, there's that, there's that, there's that. You cannot some preach. You cannot just rise up and say that, Pastor, I had a dream, and begin to mention the dream when I'm preaching. Whilst I'm preaching, you have sunk. You, have, you, you, you cannot just be, take a mic and just begin to sing. There is order, and there must be order. He said, each one you have come... Whilst we are all singing, you are tuned for. Then you, you are singing. So you can sing it in yourself, but you cannot sing it outside. And you can sing it yourself even. You have to. We all do the thing together. So when we come together, everything must be down to anything must be done on education. If everything must be down to education, then we must be in sync. Hallelujah. Every mandate that God has given us, He will hold individuals who have the gift for that execution responsible. Hallelujah. So Titus 1.5 For this reason I left you in Crete 
that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I have commanded you. So somebody is under command to appoint elders. And the, the church in Crete, it is not said we go and discuss with them. No, if somebody has been commanded to appoint the leaders so that one of the things that were lacking was that there were no leaders. So the first thing is set leaders so that they can put things in order in the church. For this reason, I left you that he's talking to Titus that you should set in order. God wants things to be done in an orderly man church. And there must be order in church. Appoint leaders. Set them there so that the leaders will enforce order in church. Hallelujah. First Timothy 3.15 But if I am delayed, I write to you that you know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of the beloved. This means that there is a way we ought not to conduct ourselves in the house of the Lord. And we don't assume that people know how to conduct themselves in the house of the Lord. Because you conduct yourself well in an examination room and yourself well in your office or your home or your neighborhood does not mean that you know how to conduct yourself in the house of the Lord. It is the word of God that will teach you. And it is a pastor that will explain to you how you ought to conduct yourself. And there's a way we ought to conduct ourselves in the house. So when we come together, you cannot say that you cannot like like you want like the praise and worship. Everybody, you have your favorite song. So everybody will send their favorite song to Yvonne so that Yvonne will sing for us. You can sing it in the house. You can sing it all the way to it. But when we get here in the church, in the assembly, there's somebody that has been set who prays, who waits on God and bring the song that he has brought. It's not the song for her alone, for all of us at this now time. You cannot say that they don't sing our songs. They are singing too much English or three songs. And you are in this order. There's a word for you. That they should sing this song. Sing this. No, we don't discuss the song we sing in church. Rather, pray for the one who has been put in charge. So that she will sing the, the songs. Because worship is not for you. You don't have to enjoy worship. Church is not an entertainment center. When we go for every other concert outside, we pay. They sing for us. But when we come here, we sing unto God. It's not for you to enjoy. If you look like you're enjoying it, it is just inspiring you. So that in that feeling, you can... You, it can facilitate you to worship God even more. It's not for you. So you, you cannot send your songs. Even me, I hardly give them songs. Do you understand? So why is that when you come here, each one has a tongue. This one has this. One, you cannot just come and say that Sunday you want to sing. Or Sunday you want to do this thing. On a Sunday, no. It's not like that. He said, there's a way we ought to conduct ourselves. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. We know who is the author of confusion. I always tell you that it's not difficult to know Satan. You just have to know God. Anybody who knows God will know Satan. We don't have to study demonology and all of those things. Just get to know about angels. Everything opposite of God is Satan. God loves peace. You don't have to, you don't need a sermon to know what Satan loves. That's why people who always focus on teaching Satan and, and evil things. And he said, you see, turn on the light. Light exposes darkness. You don't need, you, you, you don't need, you, the more you know God, say, ah, sinan na metie, enti bakunen nye nye asa. You don't need another sermon on that one. You don't need to be taught how to hate. The flesh is always showing you that way. You just need a sermon on love. You don't need a sermon on sin. You know. You need a sermon on righteousness. That when you preach righteousness, sin is exposed. God didn't call us to go and preach sin. Righteousness. I said, Bible says, awake to righteousness and sin not. It's not awake to sin and avoid it. Awake to righteousness. You, when you know God, you automatically know Satan. It's like, how do you know that you're not a woman? Because you know that you're a man. 
I'm a man. I'm not a woman. And I don't need anybody to tell me why because I know that I'm a man. You can't come and teach me that. No, no, you can't. You can't. Hallelujah. God is not the author of confusion. So anything that brings confusion and disorder and, and distort one accord in any meeting, whether home fellowship or prayer meeting or rehearsals or Sunday service or return, anything that seems to be bringing confusion, say so Satan is trying to enter. We have to stop it. Hallelujah. The church was so orderly when it started. Even when you want to help the poor, there's a protocol how to help the poor. Paul wrote like he was talking about to wives. That, you know, so that text is not women, it is to wives. And how they should learn how. He said, let the, the elderly women teach the younger one how to love their husbands. And he, no more be brave. When the church started, if there's, be, if there's somebody in need and you want to give it to them, you want to give it to them, there's a protocol. You go and you lay it at the apostles' feet. And the apostle does the distribution. Acts chapter 4, verse 30, 34. Nor there, was, no, nor there was anyone among them who lacked. For all who has possessions, lands, and brought them. They sold them, they brought the proceeds that they sold. And they didn't go and give to the people directly. And they laid them at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each one as anyone had need. Even in sharing of arms. Even in sharing, you, you go to the pot and it is distributed. Why can't you give it to the people? Go and ask God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even when you're offended, you see, the church is not a perfect place. There's, there's, there's a place for offense because we are all growing, including the pastor. We make mistakes and we won't stop making them. It will not be deliberate. But there is, even he himself, he said in Hebrew chapter 3, Hebrew chapter 8, verse 12, that he will not remember our sins anymore. He knew that we, 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 we will falter in this flesh in Psalm 103. He said he knows our frame and he understands that we are dust. He knows our frame, he understands that we are dust. And so, he, in the church, he made provision for when people are offended, how they should go about it. In Matthew chapter 18, from verse 15 to 18, he said that he knew that somebody will offend you. Somebody will offend you. He said that if you're offended, if anyone sins against you, it's a brother. It's not Satan. No. A brother. A brother. Brothers sin against brothers. Why did he write it there? He said, why did he, why did he put it there? If the brothers, the brother is a saint, but he can sin against you. He said, he said, if the brother sin against you, comma, he's a God of order. Go and tell him his fault. Don't go and tell another person. Protocol, there's order. Even for offenses. When offenses can come, there's a way it must be handled. Go and tell the person. We all know this. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. If he doesn't, you take one person. Protocol, protocol, order. This is the house of God. He said, go with another person. And if he still doesn't hear, be patient. Then let the church elders be made aware. Protocol. You don't just say, somebody has offended you. Then you start talking. Somebody has offended you. Then you go and tell another person. What do you want to achieve? And Satan can use you and you don't know. Why can't you offend you? Then somebody has offended you. Then you stop coming for the meeting. Someone has offended you. Then you stop talking on the page. And you can't tell the person. The Bible says, go and tell him his fault. And between him. And he has set protocol for all these things. Order. Hallelujah. Do you see it? Everything is order. So let all things, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse, 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 chapter 14, verse 14. Let everything be done decent. Not some things. Every aspect of the church, everything be done orderly. Everything, beloved. What this, what this series will do for you is that it will, it will set you up to receive the most, 
for, for these meetings to make sense and to be a blessing to you. Let not some things be done decently and in order. Hallelujah. Order means punctuality. You all come on time. Nobody is late. When people are late, it creates this order. Come to church late, then people are worshipping, then you come and break the worship. Then it's, that's why you have to come on time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. Listen, God loves order. How many of you have heard a story about the, the, the queen of Sheba and, and, and Solomon? And how he went there and saw order. He saw, he saw the, 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 his servants and the place and the, the way they are. He, the Bible said he, he felt there was no life in her. Here he saw order. Look at the God gave them Noah. He gave him the dimensions of the ark. He said, Noah, go and build something for me. Use your mind as you are led. No, he showed him. Priest Natarieno. You don't go and ask God, I'll go how about the back? Building of the temple. He said, outer court, inner court, holy of holy. God, how, how about can't we add? No, 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 no. God. The temple, he gave them the wood to use, the dimensions, everything. The Old Testament, you see order. The New Testament must be much more order. But there, the Holy Ghost visited them once a while. But as he dwells in and he's the, he's the agent for order. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. First, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. Now we exhort you therefore. Can I get this in NIV? Okay, you let's read here. Now I exhort therefore, brethren, warn those who are unruly. Unruly in here, brought for a be brain to us. It may be more recent translation. Warn those who are unruly. Unruly. One those who are idle and disruptive. Disruptive. Hallelujah. Can I get another version? Those who are disruptive. One those freeloaders to get. So warn them. Hallelujah. Those who are unruly are people, the unruly is another word for disorder. Because it is very unruly. Because you are disordered. Say, say, warn them. Warn them. Because if they will be in church, they must be in order. Say, so warn them. He gave a warning against them. Hallelujah. So when you come to your church, when you come to church and say, let's raise our right hand and wave, then your hand is down. You are unruly. You are, you are disordered. That is not how you worship God. You, you like to kneel down, but the one leading has been inspired by the Spirit to say we should all wave. When you get home, you can kneel and wave and do everything, but in that 15 minutes, the Spirit says we should wave. Maybe in the waving, we will get something from the Spirit. Because you, you, are, you are like this. You are doing worship. Everybody is waving, then you are like this. You are, you are unruly. We are warning you. Because, you see, that thing does not allow the this, of the church is a serious thing. It can be that that six people who did not raise their hand is the reason somebody didn't get the miracle during that time. And if people are compliant everywhere apart from church, I always say it. You sit. But when you come to church and the ashes are arranging, you give them tough time. Hallelujah. We have to be take this thing serious. This is how it is. This is how it ought to be. When we are all going, we go. When we are all coming, we come. Order. Order. And they say, when you know, children are not. That's what the destiny says. So that we all, we all do the thing. You are waiting for the next song. You have broken the atmosphere. There must be order. That we all do things. They say you should sit here, you sit there. Uko, 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 baby, everybody can command you, but the ushers in church, they cannot command you. Yeah. 
even in the using of our gifts, beloved. Romans chapter 12, verse 5 to 8. Among the amongst among us different people have God did not just give us the gift for us to use it anyhow. So we all be many are uh, one body. So we see one body, he's come to talk about a gift, but he's talking about body. He didn't, he didn't just there's a reason he uses body and not just family or just church or just people. He uses body to bring your head, your knees, your shoulder, and everything to perspective. That he's come to talk, talk about something that is important and we can we can learn its functionality and its purpose or meaning from the body. One body in Christ, and individual members of one. That your shoulder, you have no hand. Your shoulder is holding your hand. And it has been holding it for a long time. When, when the shoulder is not happy, he will still be holding the hand. You know, the shoulder is always happy. I'm telling you, they are there. Having then this gift, differing according to the grace that has been given to or be our different grace, let us use them. There's a way. If prophecy, let him prophesy in proportion to the faith. Listen, I mean, I want my own voice. You see, when you understand these things, envy and jealousy and things will go away. Why can she sing more than me? Is that your problem is with God, not her? Because it's God who gave her the voice. You to find what there's something you can also do more than her. Find it, learn Bible, come to church. We will teach you, and you can also do it. Or see, let one man give this a Or see, there's a, there's a grace back in the gift. So use it. There's a parameters. You to me in case, oh, oh, your prophet in the oh, be my any directions. You see, let them use if prophets, let them prophet. There's proportion. Men for so, oh, who your men cast a room, oh, who your men cast a room. It's not a fault that you couldn't see. There's a proportion. And he goes on all the other gifts. Look. Or ministry, this service. Let him use it in ministry. He who teach in teaching. Don't use your, your ministry or your teaching to do any other thing. Don't use it to manipulate people. It is only for teaching. The spirit that gave you is showing you how to use it. Don't use the teaching to go and do any other thing. It is for teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives, not just give, there's a way you have to give. You have to give in liberality. You know, there's a hand that's not giving. So you come and give in conditions. If I give this, you have to give this post in the church. I've been giving, ah, that I don't have post in the church. It's, it's the giving, the one that gives, they give it, it has to be liberality. The leaders, you cannot just lead anyhow. Those who are the gift for leading with diligence. You cannot just say, I have the lead, I have the gift, and I want to, I want to do like a desica. You cannot put pressure on me to report and all this. The, the reason why we are putting pressure on you to do the work is because he who gave you the gift and gave you this gift of a pastor has given you an instruction of diligence. You have forgotten. That's why we are pressing you. With diligence. You cannot just lead anyhow. We have to force you to be diligent. He who show mercy, you cannot show the mercy anyhow. I have to show it with cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. Hallelujah. Now when you look at the Bible, in, in, even in church leadership, there's order and that is where the problem is. You know, God, when he came to walk here on earth as a man called Jesus, he spent his time with 12 people. Later, he saw that they were, in, they were 72. By the time the Holy Ghost was coming, they were 120, and they grew. Love it. He spent time with all of them. He called all of them one day. He called them equally. Now, now listen to me. If you get this one, you'll get all the answers that have been saying because this one is the one that put, like Henry said two weeks ago, it is this offices and this gift of pastors that put all the other things into perspective and they are the people that enforce the order. If they are not in order, the church will not be in order. And the church must be in order by acknowledging the office. Beloved, you see, honor is, 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 is a condition that must be satisfied. 
And when there's no honor, God cannot move. One day, God himself, not a pastor, not a prophet, not Moses, not Paul, not Peter. God himself, he was in a man. He went to his hometown. He couldn't do focal. But there was this order. What was this order? The disorder was dishonor. He couldn't work miracles. Na, na, na me. Onua, or ye where they know. A lot of sick people there. Even his brothers that were dishonoring him, they had problems. As the Bible says in, in Mark chapter 6, when the person is God and you say he's a carpenter's son, as a master, you think that you are just thinking there's a carpenter's son. I'm a Sidiaba. I'm a banana. You see, when that thing comes, there's this order, but you cannot see it. Nothing can flow. There's a cut, like there's a block. Jesus said he couldn't do any miracle. He can't help. There's this order because somebody has been set and somebody has been sent to them for them to receive him. And if you don't receive leadership, in however way God appoints and uses them, there's this order. And you'll be in church for years and you won't change. So, look at something. God was working with 12 people. When he died and he came to Peter in John chapter 12, sorry, 21, Verse 15 to 18. We all know the story. Listen. Philip and all the guys studied under, feet, under the feet of Jesus. But when Jesus was leaving, he told Peter to feed sheep. Ay! Obi eti ante. Obi ako ko ampai. Nobody complained. That is where he started setting all. One day he said, when you are raising, I pray for you. Strengthen your brethren. He set order. He didn't just start a church. He set, he told them to gather at a place. Some, some people say that Jesus didn't start a church. Church is, is man's idea. It's God's idea. He told them, to, in this series you learn, he told them to meet at a place. They were all one accord at one place. What is that? Before the Holy Ghost came. They were one accord at one place. What is that? What is that? He set leadership and all of them learned but he didn't discuss with anybody. He just said that Peter, feed my sheep. And when some people went to go and ask that we want to sit here and say, he say, hey, 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 hey. Since then, the antis had any more. You know there are people that wanted to bribe and sit on left and right, even them themselves. You see, he trained all of them. But he committed all of them to the person. One day he said that on this rock, church. See, he said, ah, what? Oh, no. What we all have been doing? See, we are fair. It's superior than an But God in his wisdom set leadership. Everything at the head is a monster. It's a beast. And God has in heaven, he is God. The God and he is God. And he said, I've given him a name above every other name. Obi I but me, I've given him a name above And nobody is asking questions. You see, when he comes to church, you see, after church and everywhere, you can do all this, but when he comes to church, let's learn to submit. So that is why you see, those who have the position and the honor and the privilege to lead must not shove it over us, must not lord it over us because all of us could have done it, but God knows why he has chosen you. That's why you shouldn't, you shouldn't let us feel that we are less important because we also have something. We also contribute something. Hallelujah. So every gift has been given for us to serve. And so when, the church, when Jesus left, Set leadership. They all the top didn't say that. Uh huh. And they say, I won't. Yes, you go in and then three and a half years in and then an ante. And they are sorry, no. Here in now, you leaders. There be one person. Somebody will determine when we have to meet. 
somebody will determine how long we will meet. Somebody will determine where we have to meet. Somebody will name the ministry. Somebody will name the church. Somebody will start the church. It doesn't make him superior. But God said these things. So he said, Peter, oversee them. Guide them. Guide them. And they all submitted. Surum. In Acts chapter, you see, in Acts chapter 1, Peter stood and addressed when they were about to replace uh, Judas. You saw that he started work immediately. He stood and he addressed the people. When the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, you saw him starting leading. And every, Stephen, all the eleven submitted, all the ones. You see, Obi and your Holy Ghost named Obi. He came over 120. They all had it one day. But one per, they allowed one person to lead them. Then he said, ah, your Holy Ghost is not old. My Holy Ghost, your Holy Ghost is not older than my Holy Ghost. Peter, what is why is Peter alone preaching? Why is he? Why is that every day this person? You are out of order. Be careful. That is not church. So church, there is brainwashing. Yes, our brains are not correct. He did, did, did he not say that renew your mind? Did he not say that renew your mind? If our minds were correct, we don't need church. Yes, let this Paul said, I am out of my mind. If I am crazy, I have the mind of Christ. Yes, church is for brainwashing. Because school and university didn't wash it well. Common sense haven't washed it well. We still make stupid and foolish mistakes. That's why we come, so that they come the word of God to brainwash us. It is honor. It is order. Peter stood. Peter is talking to me. I have something to say. The spirit, the, 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 the spirit of the prophet is something to the prophet. You got something to say. Tell Peter, Peter will say. What's wrong with you? Do you want to say it or you want glory? Is this that you want something to say or you open the money? Peter stood. They were all with Christ, but they all submitted to Peter. And he said, upon this rock I build my church. Matthew chapter 18, 16 verse 18. Someone will always choose for us. It is never control. It is submission. It is order. Go to Islam. Go to every other religion and see. This is not even a religion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have a leader. Every year there must be a leader. The band need a leader. There must be leaders everywhere who can be held responsible and who can lead. Then we also follow. Listen, follow. There's a time will come that you will also lead. And there are other areas you also ought to lead. Just haven't discovered it yet. But all of us have got something to do and something to provide. Yes. The, ear, the nose has never want to, to say that the nose has been brainwashed to always breathe. Been breathing for 38 years. Don't you want to know how it feels like to hear? Has your nose said that before? Or your head want to walk small? Why you suffer head walk? It will be a problem. If it is a problem. There's a reason why a numbness won't I ask you no. Only no until any sir. And a numbness won't say no. It will chihani a hanumono. And yet the same. There's a reason that this one is a little thicker than here. Some people don't want some people are disorderly and they are reckless, they don't like church. He put all the people under Peter. But they were equal. Somebody must always lead. Because it's not about us. It's about him. Unless you want something to be about him. And you have an agenda that we don't know. If they want to do their thing and not doing well, what's your responsibility? Pray for them. If you have, if you have, listen, if, if offense come and there's a way to hold it. So what if the pastor too offends somebody? There's a way. The pastors also submit to people. There are leaders in the church. The pastor has a wife. You didn't call the pastor. Oh, that's why pastors submit. Listen, we 
cannot just get up and do and say anything in church. You know, so when we gather, we do anything, we do anything together. You can just get up right now and come and say, what I'm saying, then you come and close my name, you just can't walk like that. Come do that in parliament. How much more? Hallelujah. So God set Peter over them. And James in Jerusalem, he was in the book of Acts chapter 15. There was a church council meeting. And James was the head of the hill. The, the church now was Jerusalem. No, he was the head. They called a meeting and they, they were having meetings. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 6, when they were sharing food and people felt that they were being, they were being left out. In Acts chapter 6, when we read from verse 1 to verse 4, people were... They, they went to the leaders. They, there was leadership. They are not the leadership. And they went and they, they went to complain to the leadership. They didn't start talking among themselves. Listen, in those days, when the members of the disciples were multiplying, there, were, there arose a complaint. Complain. Concerns against the Hebrews and the Hanalists concerning the widows and the re- some people were neglected. They said, no, if when these things come, they say, we'll do it. Go down. went this is disorder this is disorder you see them say the attention has left the word and me the attention is on them then the 12 summoned see the 12 they summoned the disciples and said it is not desirable for us so they went to a leadership and the 12 were led by Peter They had complaints about the Hebrews. They didn't tell the Hebrews. They went to the leadership and the matter was resolved. Because you say that there's leaders in it. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, 29. Now you see, even among the leaders, there's order. There's order among the leaders. Look at something. Now, you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. And members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophet. Third, teachers. The teachers have no complaint. Why are we not first? You are not apostles and teachers, so I don't need to teach you these things. Why the apostles are first? You don't need that sermon. Maybe when you become an apostle, you will explain to me. But, the person can't just say even amongst the gift. Yes. God says that first, apostles. Second, prophet. Third, and no teacher has said that I want to be first. Why are we not? I don't know. 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 do miracles. I don't know. 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 Fourth. Fourth miracle. Third, healing. Faith helps when administration. They have an administration. They haven't complained that now it's okay. You, you, you let us know we are servant. They say when, when we are being attacked, they say the servant gift group are being molested. Number two, your mom will be. At the works in your system, if it doesn't have number, it doesn't mean it's not it. Do the work. The work is more important than them. Use the gift. There's grace on you. Don't let it be in vain. It's more important. Is it the number you want? Or you want Jesus? You see that? So teachers are dead. And now you, 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 people who are dead there, no, like you like you want you want apostles because you, you are the God God said we shall be the head and not the tail. You always be ahead. Me, I'm first. In him, I'm victorious. So people who are second and third, they can't pass me. Like I want the apostles first. So that first to first. Spirit to spirit. Teachers having complained that why are they not first? And Paul came later. Paul was not with Jesus. Paul 
Paul was not with Jesus. He didn't eat with him. All the crews that were with him, they were there, including Peter. Eh? Eh? Including Peter, who was the one to teach and feed the sheep. And he, the one that did the, his revelation, they will build the church on. And a poor by. Say, and a poor by. Paul, I want man him. Eh? Yeah. Uh, everything Henry. Everything Henry. My son for James came. That I make him smoker. My son for James came. Why is him smoker? I don't know. Hey! You have been unruly. The word of God says that. We should warn you. Paul just came out of nowhere. He came to give all of them RKO. Out of nowhere, he just came and he wrote the one who heard Jesus' voice. He wrote 13. Peter only needed the year, but wrote two. And Peter didn't. One of his letters, Peter said that, Hey, Paul, he has written in his things that even we understand. He didn't complain that, eh? that we walk with you all this while you have shown Paul all these things. We know we were with you. We that when we were coming to catch you, when they come to catch you, I was protecting you. I cut the ear of that man. Don't you remember? And you gave this grace to Paul. One day he gave gifts to people. He said, everybody's gift is important. He gives some five. He gives some three. He gives another one. He is wise. He is not like me or you. He's wise. Everything he does is perfect. You may never know. You may never know. If there was too, too much hair on your head, you will never know what would have happened. Thank God. When you get to heaven, you know. You will You will know. Why he put the, the hair here and he didn't put it? You wish it was here. But you see, God is wise. God is wise. You can live your, the rest of your life having problem with God because of hair. And you will not fulfill your purpose. Do you want hair or you want to make impact in, in somebody's life? What do you want in life? There are people that have a lot of hair. They died, they lived, and nobody know that they have lived. You don't have to live and die, and nobody know that you have dead. You are dead. Not that people won't be trained once I see him. We will church, and nobody even know that you are a church member. But you are gifted. Not that people. I will never live and die, and they will bury me, and nobody know that I passed on his face, the face of this earth, dead and gone. It's about impact. It's about purpose. It's about leaving a legacy for the next generation. I see how Paul and Peter and Jesus and all these people went through for me to make life a bit easier for me. I'm thinking about evangelism and all these people. That how I can position this church so that when I'm dead and gone, they will have a church. A papaya will be in a church. That is sound. And that's why we die, we live and breathe and die and live and lose and sacrifice for I'm making a mark. Do you think life is about hair? The young people who are not married, they think that life and marriage is all about sex. They ask people who are married, oh, where the last time they had sex? They think that, they think that every day, you think that every, every, we are always having sex. I think that in my, in my life, by this time, he, 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 he's, he's happy because you know, they think we, we, we married to have sex. But you see, that you have to live a balanced life. We only realize we only realize, ah, you understand that this is the reason why I'm married. One man, one, one, one man of God was saying that one day he saw his wife and he said, Kona kwe, shatan. He says, Kona kwe. You know, if I'm not married, you don't understand. Go, go. Actually, I said, go. 
at this time. It's in Chelsea. It's anything. Attacking her. Go and wear dress. Turn over. Go and wear. Go and wear dress. Go and wear dress. The way, the way, the way Joel is hitting the wife. <laughs> Paul was given a revelation about grace, and he wrote more than all of them. And they did. We did it. He came. They did this thing some more, but they accepted him. And they work with him. Listen, we all want to achieve this. If you have come to add to it, Charlie, you are not against us. You are for us. I cannot see why you can hold. As important as the eye is, Chikikawa, eyes are useless. Everybody is important. Everybody is important. If you want somebody to see what is paining you at the back, see somebody's eye to see that thing. Listen, listen. You see, we, we, we have to understand church and how God wants it to be. It is a body. And everybody is important. Everybody must always be present. When you didn't leave your left breast in the house before coming. It can't happen. That's why you two, you cannot stay in the house. When, you cannot leave your, this, your fingernails in the house and come here. Listen. Listen. Body. When you are walking. When, the day you walk, ask you, so you think that your hand you only used to eat. You don't think you think when you are walking, it's only your leg. This is when you think that on Sano, who did it in corner the throw? But the day you like when you start when everybody, everybody, everybody will be looking at you like they will think that you see, they will think that you want to steal something, or you have stolen something. Or, no, it's just your hand. You just don't want to swing your hand. And show bottom where down who say, and now now. And no yeah, like the way you are healthy like this. When you finish, when I go home, walk like that. The mate, when you're going to enter the car, when they see you, they don't take you. Or per passenger by on far because see, you realize that. You don't know how the you don't know how the, the things in your face that constitute smiling take inspiration from your hand that is swinging. If you try to You are looking like something other than a human being. There is this order. Why? One part of your body that must be going up and down is not there. You see the way you look. That is how we look. When we are doing worship and you say Chumami, when somebody is worshiping and because of you they cut. When you are, it is selfishness that make you carelessly come to church late persistently. Times, 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 busy ho. Worship time you Because you come and cause this order. An orderly people are worshiping an, an orderly God with orderly music. Koto ma menche, koto ma menche, koto ma menche na ujina ho, na uyesi. Koto ma menche, 
You see, the, the ear that God has given you has heard something. I mean, I don't, I don't go to church that they will be telling us, uh, Sukon Mabijna said, this is not say Kotona, me, 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 a chief. Then the chief director is, is going down. And the one that is looking for people or the application, Oni Ejumao, Oni Ejumao, Oni Ejumao. What is it? What is it? Kotona, me, no, be a cough, man, no, no, you say. No, you say. No, you say. No, you say. Sabi pass. It's this order. It's this order. It's so wrong. If we will not learn these things, we shouldn't expect any, any, any. See, church is not a place. It's not any information center. We have not come here just to listen to the word of God. You know, when you are growing up, let me go up and understand. That's what it is. The thing that church is a place is like information center. Sunday, you yeah, well done, 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 done. One by name, I mean, I say, you come and listen and you go. Some people, when, when, when they come to church, we close, but no, they, they, they are looking for, no, no, no. There's a reason why when we are doing the service, we pause and we say, go around and shake somebody. Then you be, and you go around. Everybody go around, then you be standing there. It's not nice. It is disorder. It is in this church of order that we will tell you. One of our core values, you guys, you have to change this thing. Put the core values there. I need it. Eh? Eh? Some order. I need a core value. Say, I need it to next week to, teach, to explain something. Thank you. One of our core values is excellence. It can be AKA order. You are not wrong, Derek. Those have been things that you mentioned order. When you came for the interview, you are not, you are not. It is, it is AKA excellence. It is order that produces excellence. I feel that, listen, I feel that the way there is this order in the church from doctrine to leadership among the members, every church in Ghana, uh, Africa, or the world, should declare the next year, maybe the next five years, year of order. And some you declare any other thing. The disorder is too much. Where's he say? Where's he say? Me soon soon so for me prophesy. I say all this herbalist and say, Nyam yam me draw. There's all this be every tennis. And the obiani or pen or your church. And you be on your penny or two. Basa. There's no other. And there's Christian council. And there's this. And there's nobody to be regulated. And there's this order everywhere. And a, a woman of God who says a pastor can will say that if I get this man of God, I will, I will sleep with her. And there are people in her church. Such a shame to the body of God. Like there's no leader. Nobody can call her to order. She say, we see say, she say, first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. Look at Paul. Near one man terminal. You can give me, give me, give me, or oh, see. Uh, uh, let, let, let me sum up this. But you see, we have, you see, it is in church that we submit and learn. We see from each other. And go through that put our lives in order. Make us orderly people. That this order that is in churches, take it to our workplaces. We are in it. Get results in the world seem to have. Order is the reason why the men are so effective. It's the reason why we call soldiers of Christ. You can't be a disorderly soldier. There's one here. And I don't want the ordain. The ordain. So, or see, but as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. As so I ordain, I ordain in all the churches. I say it looks like Peter has lost his job. He never complained. Or see, I want the verse that says that as I have been instructed, that this is my rule in order. Or say it is 
Or say, it is my rule. Oh, why did you remove that one? You don't like that one. Or say, as I have ordained. Or say, this is my rule. For all the churches. My rule. This is this. How by my rule? Are we all not children of God? Don't you all have the Holy Ghost? Are you not the one that said that we are all righteous? They say. Why is that you say is your rule? How about us? When you start asking those questions, Satan has visited you. He's in your tabernacle. Thank him. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, verse, verse 12 and 15, uh, 14. I urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you, who are over you. You see, God has said people, we are all equal, but he has said people over people. He set leadership in church. Who are over you? Not in your house. Who are over you? Not in your workplace. Who are over you? In the ministry, in the house of God. He said some people, oh, oh, over, not as they say. What is over? So Yvonne is over the choir. Why is it that today we are wearing white? Is we are wearing white. Why is it that we, we, are, we are wearing, unless he said that we are coming here naked. And even that one, you know, you know, you don't, I put Yvonne in the choir. He said that you all should come here naked. You don't, you don't, you don't tell Obed that, now nah, Yvonne is, is, is Pastor Yvonne okay. Me and I didn't see her. So you come to me and say, Pastor, I think Pastor Yvonne is going to wear something that I don't understand. Please, can you ask me? Is there a reason why? Then, then? You don't start talking over there. Do you understand? Who are over you? Who are over you? In the Lord. Verse 13. And to esteem them highly in love. We esteem them and their instructions. Listen, and you must know that they are not God. They are men. They can make mistakes. And if you are also there and you are said over people, you also make some mistakes. And God has allowance. You are God. You, you are not holy than God. Esteem them. Esteem them is esteem their instructions. Esteem their orders. Hallelujah. As if we don't have a mind of our own. It's a mission. There's order. There must be. You will not. The church is not for you. You will never and always agree with everything that we do. But we do it in one accord to the glory of his name. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Remember those who rule over you. Who rule over you. The traffic control department, there's somebody who is ruling there. There's somebody who is ruling there. After you have been ruled for a while, you also become a ruler. Everybody there can rule. When we say that this one is the leader, it doesn't mean he's better than you. But there must be one person that must do Two people can do it. Then the president of Ghana is the only wise person in Ghana. Eh? They have rule over you. What you are saying? Eh? Other translations make it they have rule over have God has God is God who gave them. I have a problem with them. It's a plan that you have with God. Remember your leader. They have rule over you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We have to learn to be in order in church. If you want to receive the best from God, the word of God, and lead us and from our teams. Hallelujah. The use of your giftings church attendance to be an order. I want to see people who treat God, who treat church and the things of church with content and disorder. I know that in their lives they are disorder. Hallelujah. Submit to leadership. It is God's idea. It is through that submission that the leader so come. Church is theocracy. It is not democracy. Pastor cannot come and give you orders in your house. They use blue curtains. There. But when you come, past, they have put blue curtains over. It's not everyone. 
put everybody's favorite color here. So God was. So are you looking for a color or you're looking for a church? Did you, did you come to the curtains or you came to us? So when tomorrow you come and this place, we have painted this place and the place is a certain color. It's not your favorite color we put there. So you don't like, is, it, is that what you want from a church? Then why we come to church? Pastor cannot allow settings. If he de- does that, he's trespassing. But he will determine the color. And you shouldn't have. We cannot come and discuss. We want settings here. What color do you want? By the time I ask you, I don't ask him. That's why he said to me, oh, I have rule over you to make these decisions for you. And when I take it, Eh? How many of you like this bag? Like this backdrop? A pastor like wood. Why well, you are a welder? So you like metals? So you don't like this? Maybe you have to deal with to be any day. Obey you shall throw me in metal no akwana. Is that why you go to church? Glass pulpit. You have a problem with this. They put they put water here for pastor. Pastor is pastor is preaching. They put water. But we are all children of God. You know, to, the, why do you, there's no water? You, you don't you don't have water. They should put water here. Why is there water here for pastor? Is pastor special? And when they come to church, they will give Mr. Boateng water. They will give Pastor Yvonne water. The choir said they are giving them water. Me, they don't give them. They say, how about the ashes? We, we don't need, we, we, we don't, we, we don't. And now, sorry. If you want to understand why I have water there, come to me. And if you hear that I have done something you don't understand, you come to me. I have said something you don't understand. You come to me. Eh? Eh? We don't like. You don't like why is it they are using Belacqua for pasta? This is the reason. This is the reason why they change have money. It's not, it's not. You have questions about everything. Everybody. Everything. That is not how we do church. It must be order. We submit. And I don't think we don't have we don't ask questions. Watch it. Good question. Amen. 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 What you eat this afternoon? As I'm preaching right now, you cannot just do anything. Joseph, JB. You understand? Yes. But when a bad church are there, come here. Your father in the house. Say, Want to correct your past, your, your your own life? Have you corrected your? You have to make sure that there is order. Allow bless and to benefit all. Amen. It is not control. tell anybody. It is not. It is not control. It's not called. It's just order. See, Adia, Bibia. 